Hi everyone! Welcome to Tracy Bautista Color and welcome to the spring slash almost summer, or actually it is summer, um, uh, Nature's Graffiti Collection reveal. So thanks everybody for your patience. I My, my camera was not um, was not showing up, so I had to reboot my computer. Um, but thank you all for being here on a Sunday afternoon. I hope that you are all doing well. Let me see who's here. Hey, Gail, Danny, Marjorie from the Chili Bay area, Renee from hot, very hot Texas. <laughs> um, hey, Sydney. Uh, let's see. Hey, Char. Nice to see you. Danny, nice to have you here. Um, who else is here? Hey, Pat, Noel. Um, I'm sure I missed a few of you. Mary from Iowa, Judy from Northeast Georgia. Hey, Wendy from Canada. Um, I wanted to share a little peek into my quarterly subscription. So if you didn't know, I have a quarterly paint subscription that I've actually had since 2017. When I first started my this portion or this kind of product line in my business, I actually had a monthly subscription and it was a lot to produce a brand new set of colors every month. And so I think back in maybe 20, late 2018, early 2019, um, I switched to a quarterly collection, which has been so much um, better to have the time to kind of let the collection unfold and um, use things that I'm inspired by. So many of you know, if you've been here before, that I um, have a process that I teach in my Inspiration Sketchbook course that takes you from idea to a collection and that could be anything from an idea to a paint uh, to a painted pa painted collection body of work to surface pattern designs and also that process is the same process I use to create my paint collection so I wanted just to share a little peek inside one of the levels of the box and I I don't do this very often I've done maybe a couple unboxings in the past but because this the um, because of the subscription has been sold out pretty much it's been sold out every year and so I haven't really had time to share kind of the behind the scenes and so I wanted to be more intentional moving forward I'm going to be opening up spots for the subscription in a probably a month or so but I just wanted to show kind of what you get as a subscriber and also some of the collections I actually make a little bit extra so after it's released to the subscribers then I open it up for either pre-order and or if I have extra boxes then I um, put those up in the shop so some of you already snagged the extras that I have I think there's a couple more um, boxes up there and I may be releasing some watercolor pans and some inks uh, tomorrow. I think I have a handful that um, might be available in the shop. So um, I was trying to go through all my inventory and see what was left after everything was shipped out. But if you are a subscriber, then your order should have arrived. Unless you are international, then it might have taken a little bit longer. But they started shipping a couple weeks ago and through last week. And so some of you um, got them a couple weeks ago and some of you got them this week so I hope that you are enjoying it them um do I have any of my I know there's a few of you here Char and Mary who are subscribers um and did you get your packages uh yet um I would love to know this collection is uh I think I fall in love with every collection but <laughs> I had a lot of fun designing this one it is I think a lot of my paint collections um, definitely are inspired by the things that I love and that I'm passionate about or a memory or a travel experience. And this particular collection 
is really inspired by the theme of nature's graffiti. So, you know, the intricate patterns in, in the sand, if you even look through any of my Instagram, you'll see a lot of these, these images like in the, the photos that I capture, but it's what the, that the, it's the, all the things that, um, nature just, you know, shows its beauty to us. And, you know, it could be the intertwining of a bunch of vines that are just like wrapped around a tree. And so I wanted to take that essence of those things that I really am drawn to in nature and put that in a paint collection. So there's just this natural beauty in the kind of quote graffiti that nature has and that that uh, we see in our everyday um you know, life and experiences when you travel or when you go out into the wilderness or a hike. Um, if you start to look around, you just see this, like the, these really beautiful textures and intricate patterns. And so the colors are really inspired by a lot of those different things. So if you were to go to the collection page on in my shop I write I have a little write up there and I usually do a short little um write up I, I wouldn't say it's a poem or it's just kind of my thoughts behind the collection but I wanted to start and show you before I do the reveal I wanted to show you a little of the inspiration so I have a mini inspiration board hanging behind me right here or not hanging but it's just on a piece of foam, foam core so let me grab it. And a lot of times when I start thinking about a collection, I do this in a couple of ways. Let's bring this here so you can kind of see. Uh, these are printouts from, most of this is from my iPad. There's a few pieces of like hand painted work that then I created a mood board um, inside of Procreate. And so each one of these, this is actually some of the, this is a sneak peek. I showed, I think I showed this in one of my workshops, this down here. This is a piece of fabric. So if you are a member of the Swatch Studio flare kits, that flare kit is going to have printed fabric. I actually am going to be shipping that probably mid to later July. I thought they would be ready, but that I wanted to include not only Nature's Graffiti, but those of you who are in the Swatch Studio, you know I already I also released the Boho, um, the Boho Vibes uh, digital inspiration board. So that kit will have both of those in there. But I wanted to show you the Nature Nature's Graffiti, um, kind of some of the inspiration behind it. So this these picture these these printouts include photographs and and um, artwork that I painted or photographs that I've taken. And let me just put this back up here really quick. And there's lots of those layers and I tried to bring them out in the textures using Procreate. But I also will take the idea and once I have that theme, I'll brainstorm usually in my journal or in this case, I did a mind map, I think in Procreate also, and um, or in my sketchbook and just do some drawings. And one of the first things that I do also is kind of gather some art that I've created that might be related to the theme that I have already. And then from there, I kind of start to pull together the ideas for the colors for the collection based on some of the things you see here, like the photographs, and then I pull the swatches from them. So like you can see the little swatches right over there. <laughs> and um, I want to show you, let's see, now that my camera is working, let's see, I'm going to show you my desktop and it's kind of mess right now. Oh, because I had my other tripod, let me move this. My other arm, the tripod arm is down here because I was um, filming some video with my other camera. So this one's a little crooked. <laughs> Let's see. I moved this camera. Okay, there, I think we're good now. Okay. Um, 
So before I show you all these goodies, I wanted just to show you some of the things that I do when I pull together the, the, co the collection itself. So there are times when I will, again, like kind of go through the artwork that I have that, that I feel like kind of go with this theme. So I pulled out some of my previous pieces that I had painted, some ink, this is all, and all of this is Tracy Bautista color. Like all of this on here is paint, watercolor, ink that I created. And I just wanted to use some of these as the inspiration behind um, some of the art that was in that theme. And then I pulled together, you know, bits and pieces from other, sessions of my paintings just to see if there's anything that you know might inspire me for this collection that I can then use visually but also I have these little pieces where did I put them over there but also then I start to create some let's take my Costco gas receipt out or whatever is that I don't know what that was um okay we were I was making paint in a class the other day, so I have all this stuff underneath here, which I forgot to cover. Let's see. Let me grab a piece of paper to cover this. Just so nothing sticks to the artwork. So on here, um, I will then start to pull some of these pieces. Some of these are the some of these are the paints from this collection, but then they also include some of the swatches from other collections. But there was this color palette that I really started to pull from a lot of this work and just like some of the imagery that I had done. And so I'll grab some of these and then hang them up on my inspiration board. And a lot of this work right here, so this is a mixture of my painted work and some layers of photos inside of Procreate. Same with this. Um, and same with, this is a mixed media piece. So this is kind of the essence that I wanted this collection just to have. It's this like really wild, um, graffiti inspired look of nature. So this is actually magnolia blossoms that I created this pattern out of um, inside of Procreate. And then from there, I've got this like color palette. And so it's all about collecting the color. And in my play collective, we did a bunch of exercises this last session where we did a bunch of collage pulling together some colors. And so this right here helped me jumpstart the color palette along with the things that I, um, the things that I had gathered as far as photographs go and some of the canvases that I created inside of Procreate. So that's just kind of the the inspiration behind my collections and it is something that i um do for every one of the collections that i create and so now you can see why it takes a little bit longer because then it gives me time to really play with the idea and kind of let it marinate i will hang you know like a, a, a board i created a bunch of those pieces and then i put them up in my paint making studio and just had that sitting there while I was mixing and creating this collection. And so um, from there, then all of the magic starts. <laughs> then it's just this like um, one color, I start with one color and then it starts to go from there. So I'll, that, that first color that I design, I will pull it from, you know, kind of all of the, the research and the brainstorming and ideation that I've done. And then I will take that color and then build the entire color palette around it. So um, I usually will make a tile for myself that just has a swatch of every color that's in the collection. 
and not every color is on a tile that is shipped out but because I make them in such small batches I always usually create a tile that has all the colors that I made for the collection because that way I kind of have a record of it and then I can always go back and and see how it compares to the last the previous collection so I don't know if I have the wander collection here I don't think I do I have the holiday collection so these so each one of these I'll I'll turn the camera down so you can kind of see what these look like yeah I don't know what I did with the wander collection that the wander collection was my last um, winter kind of spring collection so you can see here these are just some this is the wild blooms from last year and this was holiday which looks really messy <laughs> that one I just kind of mishmashed everything on there there was probably like 20 or more colors um, in the holiday collection that's why I have like two big tiles that are filled with with paints like that but um, so when I am creating, then I also, at the same time, am creating, let me grab my journal, paint making journal. I create a swatch and then I test, test it out. So let me put these back over here. And I mentioned this in my other class this weekend, but if you don't, um, lay, if you want to, you can label the backs of the tiles with the collection if you want to remember. So I just used a Sakura Permapink pen to do that. You could use a Sharpie, any of those will work. But every collection, I designed different size tiles um, and some of the times they're square, sometimes they're rectangles, sometimes some collections get a nice little, uh, just like a, a different sort type of tile. So it just depends on my mood, I guess, <laughs> when I'm creating them. And then that's how the collections start to unfold. And then let's see, let me bring out some of the swatches from this collection so you can see. So as I am designing the colors, you'll see lots of swatches in my journals like so. So these are some of the inks as I was developing the inks for the collection. These are some of the watercolors and inks testing on different papers. So I always recommend that you test your paints, any paint line that you have, test them on different sub substrates, different surfaces. This, These are, um, in my paint making journals, I usually have like just lines and lines of, this is as I'm making the paints. This was my, um, and I think this was a five or anniversary collection last year. And so this collection had lots of different greens for the inks. They're really pretty. They've got one has like this purpley kind of tint to it. And then another one has a mica, like this really pretty gold shimmer, but you can only really see it when the light hits it. And then there's a really vibrant, like almost like lime green. And then there's one that's a little bit more muted and, um, it's got more of like a brown undertone. You can kind of see as the inks dry, like what it looks like. So this particular set of inks was more towards the green side and I'll show you some of those in a minute. But that is a little bit of the swatches from the inks and watercolors. Not all of them, because I have a couple of different books that I work in, but this is the this is the mixture of the pigment bars and the new wax pastels. And you can see the, the variety of color, but for this collection, there, there was these highlight colors. There was this really beautiful blue that I wanted to put in there and then variations on these like pops of pink. So these are a little bit more fluorescent. I haven't done a pink in a while. And so it was fun to kind of put that in this collection. There's just like a couple of pops of pink in there, especially for this time of year. I think it's nice to bring it in, but it also ties in like the 
the flowers and some of the pinks that you see in nature. But this collection has a lot of muted greens, a few different blues. There's a couple of darker, um, like not black. They're kind of like a blue black and a greenish, like smoky kind of color, but they really just are so pretty as you layer them and play with them. So I also shared recently, if you saw my latest YouTube video, um, there is a video there where I showed how I created these abstract florals. So there's a whole section on how I heat these up with my travel iron. And I show how some of these abstract florals unfold. And this is all with the wax pigment bars and the wax pastels. So they've been so much fun to layer and play with on top of each other. And then here's more swap swatching. So I'm going to do some live swatching today, but this is how I test all of my, all of my, um, paints and inks as I'm making them. So this again is a, this is a Daiso sketchbook. And I actually love this sketchbook. I need to see if they still make it, but I use it to swatch out a lot of my paints as I'm making them. Let's see if there's any, this is, oh yeah, here. So you can see some of nature's graffiti in here. This is, this was the Wander collection. And then Nature's Graffiti, there's a lot of this collection. One of the base colors in the um, in the paints is a beautiful gray titanium. And so it makes a lot of the colors super matte and very like, um, not dull, but velvety looking when they're painted. So they're very opaque, almost like a gouache, but it's not a gouache because the recipe I use is not for not gouache. And it's just the gray titanium. It's such an opaque um, pigment that it brings this really beautiful neutral um, to the colors and the, the, uh, to the watercolors that I created. So that's what you're seeing in here. So this is how, you can see as I'm creating the paint, like I put a little bit more water and then I'm testing some of the other, um, I think that's probably one of the wax pastels on top of it. And you can see as I start to just kind of alter the color just a little bit. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I can see it. Um, you see just subtle differences. And each one of these is uh, showing how the color unfolds as I'm actually like, mulling the paints and I'll add in a couple of other colors. So this is just swatches. I have an actual paint recipe book where I write not the exact recipe, but just the pigments I use. And so I have a little bit more detailed notes, but I have lots and lots of these like swatch pages as I'm, as I'm creating the collection. So hopefully that gives you a, a really good insight into the process. It is Definitely a, and I say this all the time, it's a labor of love. It's very time intensive. It's very physical. You wouldn't think that making paint is very physical, but the act of like mulling the paint is, it's a, it's, it's, you know, it's not like it's hard to do, but it is very physical and it's a, it's really, you could, you can, um, it's not like you're getting a workout in the gym, but the, the movements and all of it, it's just all this really, it's a beautiful like dance, I think, when you create handcrafted color. And so I, I try to share that in the videos and some of the reels that I show in when a collection is being developed because it is not done by machines. Like a lot of the manufactured paints that you buy in the art supply store, they have big machines. They have, they have uh, mills that they use. They have like a three ball mill or a, a roller where it's basically somebody is still pouring the pigment and the binder in there, but they're not physically like doing the work. They're letting a machine do it. So um, for all of my work, I am hand doing it. There is a couple of things that I do use a 
mixer for, but for not for the watercolors. And watercolors are completely done um, in very small batches. And so that's why I love this process. It's um, I, I like making the layered pans and not having them just one single color. And a lot of that is because of the way that I make paint. It's in made in such small amounts that I'm able to create all of those beautiful layers inside of the pans. And I think I have a couple of, I didn't even bring that many pans, but I'll show you them. Let me see. Um, Char says, I agree. Love everything about nature's graffiti and playing with some of the collection this afternoon. Thanks, Char. Yay. I'm excited. Uh, Mary says, I'm excited because I have a purple cow hot iron tool. Oh, I don't know what that is. And I can melt the crayon, the melt the crayons and pigment sticks. Yes, you can melt the wax pastels. And I actually found one of my quilting irons that's working. So I'm going to bring that in and show you what it looks like if you've never seen a quilting iron before. I tried to look up the Samsonite mm, iron that I have, but I don't think it's manufactured anymore. Or if it is... There was one Amazon seller that had them, but I don't know if it couldn't tell if it was brand new or not. I mean, that, that those irons I show in the video, I've had them for over 15 years and they still work great. They were, they like detach and then you can like um, put them. So it's like this one flat thing, but the key to using the wax it, um, heated is to make sure you don't have, or you, you have an iron that does not have holes. So no steam and then you can melt them. And there's all kinds of irons out there that have, you know, you can, there are, I think, craft irons that have, and maybe that's what Mary has too. Um, let's see, hey Sandy from Melbourne, Australia. I love Melbourne. Um, have you been to, uh, what is it called? St, is it St. Luke's? St. Luke, I think it's St. Luke's, um, the art store there. Um, Yes, I've been lucky enough to go there twice to Melbourne. Um, I taught out there in 2000, I think it was eight, 2008, the year I taught out in, that year I traveled a lot. I taught in Australia that year. I taught in Bali that year and in Mexico that year. I was basically living the life um, on the road <laughs> that whole year. I came home uh, for a day, packed, did my laundry, packed my clothes, and then I was off to the next location. Let's see. Um, okay, so now it's time for a little show and tell, and I'm going to show the um, pigment level. So in my subscription, I have two levels. There is a pigment level, and it's just the name of it. It's called pigment. You're not actually getting pigments, um, like powdered pigments. Um, and then the artisanal level, which is the full collection. So it's kind of like the ultimate bundle of the products that I create every quarter. And so um, I'm going to show you the pigment level subscription and then um, and show you some of the pieces of the art artisanal. I actually shipped, oh, well, yeah, I think all the artisanal boxes um, were completely, I didn't make that many extra. So I have some of the tiles, but I don't have the full box. But I am going to show you now. So let's see. Let me grab them. And let me switch my camera. Let me see. I was trying to see if I had another. I've been moving stuff around in my studio. I was trying to see if I had another piece of like nicer paper I could put down on the table because this one looks a little messy, but oh well, I think we'll be fine. I was do I was um painting with oils the other day a couple weeks ago, so all these papers have like little oil slicks on them. Maybe this side looks prettier than the other, even though it's it's all painted on. So I love keeping uh, just random paper underneath my surface while I'm working on a project because I can clean my brushes. I can, you know, um, do all kinds of mark making. And so normally I have something, I'm just covering my surface too because we were making paint in my play collective the other day and I didn't want to clean this up because there's so much paint here that I can still use that I'm just leaving it to dry there. 
um, because I do work on large slabs. So on this side of my studio table, there's a big, like a big 24 by 12, I think, tile that's full of um, hand color, handmade paint, but it's like also full of things stacked on top of it. So <laughs> I can't really show you. Um, okay, so here's a little peek. One of the things that I really try to do when it comes to the packaging for my paint collections is that I really want everything to be as reusable and recyclable as possible. So you'll notice that a lot of my packaging is in the craft recyclable packaging cardboard. I use this to package almost everything because it's a cushion, but then you can also use it to make some really great prints for printmaking. And then I also use this um, drywall tape that you can also take apart and put it in your journal. Many of you have written to me and um, I have told you where it, I get it. I just get it from Home Depot and I love what it looks like. I've been using it in my sketchbooks and journals for years. So I, I love, um, it's a little bit more work cause it, we have to like tr trim it down into smaller pieces cause it comes wide. So each one of these packages are really intentional you know there's hands everything's hand stamped on here like all of these are hand stamped they're not printed the labels on the bottles are all hand painted so it really just you know elevates the the collection itself so inside the boxes i hope that you reuse these um that's um, that's my goal is to have you reuse them and maybe you use them to store the collection. You could write the, the collection on the side of, of it, or you know you can paint these, but I encourage you to reuse it. So inside the boxes, um, there's usually a little insert that tells you what the collection is, has a picture of um, bits and pieces of the collection. It's not exactly what's in the box because everything is pretty much one of a kind um, that I create. And then sometimes there's a QR code. Uh, this one does not have the QR code in it uh, because I'm gonna do, you get a, you get a little mini playbook that has, and maybe I'll bring one up on the computer so you can see it. It has printable swatch cards in it. So you um, can download it. And then I usually have a few inspiration photos that are kind of behind the scenes from the collection itself. So sometimes I put a QR code if um, it's if that particular piece is ready be, by the time they ship. And if it's not, then it's delivered during the bonus uh, live mixed media workshop that you get access to when you are a subscriber or if you purchase a box. So every quarter I do a bonus that's um, available. It's a workshop that's available to anybody who is a subscriber and or is purchased that collection. So we do a little bit more in-depth paint swatching. I also show various techniques of how you can use my paints and inks with other mixed media. Every, every workshop is a little bit different. So um, you get to, you get to um, go and see how you can use the collection. So let me show you uh, a little peak. So in here we have a few different things and this particular one. So if you purchase the, uh, this is one of the boxes. If you just purchase the collection, this that I had uh, posted recently, this is what's coming in your box. So if you don't want to know, close your eyes. <laughs> or if you haven't received your collection, yet then close your eyes so um some of the boxes came with two inks some of them came with one ink and these are a couple of the the greens that are in this collection so there's like more of a vibrant like yellow green and then there's one that has a little bit more blue it's like a more of a teal turquoisey green and then 
They are glass bottles, so you can reuse these. Um, they're also nice because of the size. If you're doing dip pen work, you can use a dip pen. You can also fill, use my inks to fill a fountain pen. You just have to test it. If you have a, a fountain pen that has a cartridge that you can refill, all you need is a little syringe and you can pull up the ink in here and then put it into your fountain pen. So I know that I love using the, I have a couple, um, I have this Twisby pen that um, works great with all of my inks and even the, the mica based inks. Uh, so the thing, if you're gonna use any of my inks with a fountain pen, you wanna make sure that you um, wash it out after you're done so that nothing gets stuck in it. And um, it's a little bit more like labor intensive when you are using fountain pens, but you can use them. And some of the colors are just so beautiful inside the fountain pens. I just wanted to give a, a side note. And maybe one of these live streams, I'll show you how to fill the pens and how they work with dip pens and with um, fountain pens. Do any of you use fountain pens? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so in here, my new little, this is a little like mini package of them. You get the new wax pastels, which are so fun to use. And I'm gonna swatch a couple of them in a little bit. Uh, but they, some of them have like a little shimmer on top of them and I love using them just for mark making, but also to heat up and use as melted wax. So these are great also because you can use them with stencils because they have that side. They're a little bit harder. The recipe, um, the, it's a harder kind of wax um, pastel than the pigment bars. So it's a, a whole different like feel and texture when you lay them down on paper. And then you also get, well, actually here, we'll show you this, a watercolor pan in here. And let me see, I'm not gonna open this one. I'll, I have one here. And each one of these pans usually have any, they usually has anywhere between two and four colors in them. And they are layered and they're meant to be used with you can use them and swipe them all at once, but really it gives you the opportunity to use all three colors or you can mix a number of colors by mixing all mixing the three colors in different in different um, different amounts. And so you can really get a lot out of one pan. And I love making these. These are so labor intensive and time intensive, but I've made thousands of those little pans and everyone is different. Like there's no two in a collection that are similar. They may have similar colors in them, but they're all different. And then I have the pigment bars. So in this size, in this size, in this size box, um, or in this level, I should say in the pigment level, this came with two bars. If you are an artisanal subscriber, then you got four bars. And these are all, if there's two bars, we usually will wrap them individually because that way they're not like falling and touching each other and falling around and touching there. But in, if you get four, they're usually in a box. So here, each one of these, you can see there's different layers of color inside of that. So once you get down to some of these areas, you're gonna get this beautiful medley and mixture of colors. And then on the bottom side, um, it could be the top side too, you'll notice that there's like these little tiny crevices. And that's because they're like, there's like this little explosion, little pop of color when you use it. So um, there's these little bits in there. So when you start coloring, with a side of it, when you get to those little those little bits of color, then that will also kind of mix with the other color that's in the pigment bar. So it's, these are made in probably like, probably four to five layers um, as I'm making these. So these, these are so much fun because each one, you never really know 
what is go what it's going to end up like until it dries because once you start pouring the wax it you know they dry but sometimes they mix sometimes there's those little inclusions so it's like this little party in a in a rectangle <laughs> um let's let me go back so this one has a little a few different colors there's one two three four different colors in this particular bar you can kind of see i think let's see one two three four actually five and some of you may get bars that have this more of like a white wax on there and that's one of the blender sides even though it doesn't have color it is amazing to use because it gives you a really cool resist if you're using white paper you can get some really cool techniques but it also gives you the ability to kind of blend all of the colors together and so these little pieces of tissue are all hand everything here is hand stamped as you can see so even the packaging takes a little bit of time this time um, I have seasonal help that come that different people will come help me but this time my dad's been here so many of you who got packages this time um, my dad is awesome and he helped pack. I should actually I took a couple of videos of him packaging he's like really detailed and really good at all of that stuff so he helped me so your packages were packed with lots of love and they always are every every time so um let's see and then last but not least there is the watercolor tiles so some of you got square tiles some of you got rectangle tiles um but the pigment level you get anywhere usually it's three to five swatches but this time i decided to do a few more and i think everybody got five to seven swatches so one two three four five six seven yeah so this one had seven swatches and that's a lot of paint like this will last a very long time and um there are a few of the different greens there's this beautiful like um maroon this is really pretty it's got a matter rose and a couple of um a couple of other pigments in there that's one of my favorite mixes also for the pigment bars that I've made. So that's the, this is all the fun paint stuff that you get inside the collection. I'll put this again. I'll put this back together after. But then you also get tools. So every collection, um, there's usually some type of syringe with a needle, a blunt. This is a blunt needle. It's not, it's not a um, pokey one. I mean, it'll poke you, but it's not like a pointed needle. But I love painting with this. You can use this without or with the syringe part and you can make some beautiful lines with this. And then there's usually some type of pipette. And this time there was a, this kind of sponge and then some of you got the palettes. So it just depends on the box size that you got and what was in it um, and what fit. So. There's always kind of a, a different, a little bit different for each level. Um, some boxes might also have gotten, oh, I don't have any here, the reactive crystals, which are these really beautiful dyed um, reactive crystals that you can drop into your watercolor and the colors will activate in there. So we'll put this aside and I have some that I can paint with that are not used already. So I'm going to put these here and then that is the quarterly box and every quarter is different. How You get a whole new set of paints and inks. If you got the artisanal level, then you got a box of pigment bars. You got four pigment bars. And if you're ordering, if you ordered the... If you just recently pre-ordered the pigment bars, this is what they come, this is what they look like. So if you want to be surprised, close your eyes. <laughs> I mean, every, every package is different, but I also did make, uh, choose a smaller size box for this particular size because 
One, it helps with the reduction of um, shipping costs because the box is not so big, but also it's not wasting space. So for this collection, there's four in there and then you get um, all of these have anywhere from two. This one has, looks like three maybe different colors in it. And this one's got one, two, three, four in there. And then this one also has a blender bar side. And then this one has looks like three, maybe four. Look at the inside there. Like each one of these, it's so fun to see when they're dry because they go through this like metamorphosis once they, once they're completely dry, but they are, they're so much fun. Then I experimented with some of them making um, texture in them. So as I design them, it's always this like I never know exactly what they're going to look like because of the way that I make them. I know what the color is going to look like, but once I start kind of layering them in, they all change. And it's so fun to, if you sliced one open, sometimes you may find some other little fun things inside, um, just different colors. So um, have fun with these. They are, they're so much fun to make and they are so much fun to use. So when I swatch some of these out right now, I, I'll talk a little bit more about um, different aspects. Like I had a question about how to store them. Shar had asked, asked actually a really great question. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Let's see, I need more space. <laughs> and then we're gonna do some swatching. So if you are still with me, um, feel free to hang out and I'm going to do a little bit of swatching. If you have to leave, you can always come back and watch the replay and um, you can see I have a lot of videos on YouTube that show the making of some of the collections. Also, um, how the how I use the different things that I design. So if you've not visited my YouTube channel or haven't seen all the videos, there are a lot on there. And also in my Tracy Bautista color journal on the on my website. It's like the kind of quote unquote blog on my on my website. There's more stuff there. Let's see. Um, hi, Dana. She's watching on YouTube. She asks, I have fountain pens, regular and glass. Awesome. The glass one is more of a dip pen. I have one of those too. My sister got me from Italy. I prefer fountain pens for the continuous flow, but I'm intimidated at the same time when I need to refill. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually, I love actually refilling because I like, I'm like the, a little want to be chemist because I just take a bunch of different inks and I start mixing them and putting them together, hoping nothing, you know, happens. But, um, you can definitely, I know some fountain pens are really expensive. A lot of, I think my most expensive, it's not even that expensive, but it's probably like maybe $50. Um, but there's some that are thousands of dollars. So I could see how if you spend hundreds of dollars on your fountain pens, you may be a little bit scared to like, you know, intimidated to, to play with too many different inks. Um, but you, there's one great thing is if anything ever happens to a fountain pen, um, there is an awesome show. Well, here in the Bay Area, there is the pen show, San Francisco pen show in August, and it's all fountain pens. And it's usually in Redwood Shores. And for those of you who are my Bay Area people, um, and I taught there a, a few years back and I love that show. It's awesome. And they have people who fix fountain pens. So you can bring your fountain pen there if anything happens to it and they'll totally clean it, fix it, give you tips. It's amazing. And there's all kinds of dealers. There's, I love vintage fountain pens. So I go and just kind of peek around there. There's lots of ink. There's lots of, um, I don't know if there's any handmade watercolor there, but um, there are, if you love pens, it's such a fun show. And I know there's fountain pen shows like in other cities all over the country. So you may just search like fountain pen show. And I highly suggest to go visit one if you love pens and ink. <laughs> um, let's see. And Noelle, I see some of your questions. Uh, I'm going to move them to the questions. 
tab so I don't forget them as I go. But thank you, Sydney says, gorgeous. My camera is in the way of your guys' comments, so I can't see all of them. So a few of you use, um, use fountain. Susan says, I use fountain pens all the time, especially love the various Twisby broad nib pens. Yes, I love um, I love the flex nibs because I have such a heavy hand too. I have to be careful because I write really hard. And that's another thing that the pen shows are great for. You can test all kinds of pens out too. So definitely. Um, Oh good, Heather, Hazel, welcome. She says, I have many fountain pens and always look for cool inks. Yes, you can go crazy at some of those shows. And that's actually so funny. So I had talked about the story of me, uh, of how I started my Tracy Bautista color um, product line. And it was after I went to the San Francisco pen show because I saw all of these inks and I actually bought a bunch. There's some really awesome handmade ink manufacturers um, that are a little bit bigger scale than what I do. And so when I bought those inks, I was like, oh, I could totally do this. And so I did a bunch of research and I had a lot of the supplies and then I just started you know, experimenting and playing. I created a natural binder for mine. I didn't want to use any chemicals. So my binder and my inks um, have, it's all natural. There's no, there's no chemical in it at all. Um, I know a lot of manufactured inks have different kinds of man-made um, chemicals in them. I'm not sure exactly what everybody else puts in them, but mine is, um, mine is a gum Arabic based solution. It's a different binder than my watercolors slightly different but it is um all natural and you can smell they i use clove oil in mine and so when you open it up it has that beautiful smell of clove and that's what you what i use to um clove you could use wintergreen clove some people would like to use thyme but it is a natural uh what do you call that? So it doesn't get mold. Um, what's the, I don't know the right term. <laughs> I can't think of the right term right now. Anyways, so now it's time to swatch. I'm just going to swatch a little bit because um, I don't want to keep you all too long if you have to go. But let me grab some paper. I have a couple of different papers that I'm going to swatch on. And... Um, We'll just pull these out and I'll switch to my desktop. And then I'll try to answer your questions as I'm swatching also. Okay, let's see here. Um, I have some different types of papers. I have some mixed media paper. I have some pastel matte I'll probably use, maybe. This is this right here that I showed earlier. This was this is on the Canson XL sand grain paper. Many of you know I've been loving that paper also. Um, that's a fun one to use. And let me show you before I forget. Where did I put that thing? Oh, here it is. My quilting iron. So in the video that I shared, um, you can go back on my YouTube and watch. I just posted it yesterday, I think. Um, I used a travel iron, so it's a little bit bigger. But you can also use something like this. This is a clover. I think it's clover. That makes it. No, oh, this says CNI, but I think it's clover. Uh, this is a little quilting iron. You're supposed to use it to like do the corners of your quilts. But I use it to melt wax and to paint with. And so you can see there's a little bit of wax on there. But this one, it has just a little dial that you turn on and you plug in. And then you can either take the... You can take the end of this and melt it right on there. And then you can draw with this. You can also melt it melt it on the, the um, pigment bar like that and paint with it too. So lots of fun ways you can use this. This is nice because it's like a tinier um, tip than the big 
travel, well, it's a small travel iron, but the travel iron is definitely larger. So if you want to cover more area, but this is what the quilting iron looks like. And, um, these are great. Uh, I'm sure they probably make these still. This is old too. I've had this over 10, 15 years, but I have a few of them. And the one that I had originally pulled out while I was creating that video, the, the little dial broke. So I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't use it. And then I found this when I was um, looking through bo a box the, uh, yesterday and I'm like, oh, perfect timing. So here I have a few different papers. Um, these are some, this is the range of the colors of the pigment bars and of the wax pastels from this collection. And then some of the inks. So I usually will pour a bottle of like whatever's left over in the inks for myself. So I have a few of the colors. There, there is four different ink colors that uh, I created. And this one's pretty too. It's kind of a purple, but it's got a little green. I don't think you can see it. There's some green kind of shimmery duotone mica in there. It's, it doesn't show on the, on the computer, but it's really pretty. So that's some of it. And then I have some of the, I'm going to use some of these here. If you ordered the five set of the pigment or the wax pastels, this is what they look like in, they're all different. So there are, I think I created maybe like 15 different colors um, in in this collection of the wax pastels. So each one of these will look slightly different when you get them. But each one has a, one of the pinks in there. And then you get a variety of the other ones. So I think I'm going to do a little swatching, maybe on this Cotty paper. I really like this. Has anybody used this Cotty paper? It's made in India. It's a handmade paper. It's a nice thick, um, this is it cotton? Yeah, it's a cotton rag. And then I also have this one. I swatch on this one quite a bit. I have a few videos that show this was from France and I forgot the name of the manufacturer of that, that particular one. And then I have some blue toned mixed media, Strathmore mixed media paper, which I think I'll probably use, maybe use that. And then maybe, um, I'll grab, I'll do a little bit. This is actually sand grain paper underneath in the gray tone. So maybe I'll do a little swatching on there. And I have a little bit of pastel matte. I want to show you what the, what the, um, what the pigment bars and the wax pastels look like on this paper. It is so pretty. And this is great if you use any kind of pastel uh, type of paper. So this is by Claire Fontaine, if you're not familiar. It's a little bit expensive, but it's well worth it. The the color, the, the colors pop so much more on this particular paper. I don't know what it's made out of, um, but it's really pretty. And then here's the Canson XL Grain. It's a sand grain paper. And this is actually relatively inexpensive for the amount of paper you get. Uh, I bought mine at an art supply store, so I'm not sure when I, these came out sometime last year, so they were a bit hard to find like on Amazon, but they definitely have it at Blick and like smaller, and then mixed media paper, um, the 400 series. That's also the same as this one back here, but this is just the blue toned. So those are some of the papers, and I like to wear a glove at least on one hand while I'm working on these. And let me put my glasses on so you can see. So I'm just going to do a little bit of swatching of with these and show you kind of is the right side. Yeah, this has two sides. There's like a shiny side, which is the back side. And then there's this side. So this one is fun because so you can see some of the green that's in there. Like there's a little bit of green that's in the actual bar and then a little of it comes out there. And then if I turn it on this side, it's a totally different greenish blue color. And there's still a little bit of like a brownish little pop of color in there. So you're seeing a little bit of that come out in the bar itself. If you use these, so if I wanted to try and get all three of those colors on there, um, I could try that on see if it'll come out. So if I do sideways like that, 
you see the there's like one two three different pigment colors there's a light green this kind of darker one and then more of a bluish color so you know depending on how you hold these it's going to change every time which is the beauty of them and that's the whole idea behind them you can really get some really fun marks like this you could do a whole scene scenery of of water if you wanted to you could use these also to draw and paint kind of like leaf shapes and the beauty of these two is that you can use the side and get a thin line but you can also use the the whole flat corner like that to get the thicker line and then you can also use the whole side to get like a whole really a, a lot wider line and also you can use it to kind of spray or not spray but to color over stencils which do I have any stencils around here I'll look in a little bit um I want to show this on here too so we'll see let's do a couple of these different colors so this one has a little turquoise and that hot pink there and you'll see it come out on here look at that oh it's so pretty see that little tiny bit of color that's there and then you get a little bit of the pink but if you only wanted just the pink then you could use this side of the pigment bars hold on Indy wants to go outside <laughs> She's like knocking at the door. Okay, go. Go, go, go. I think she's interested in what my dad's doing out there. <laughs> um, and then we'll just, I'll just swatch a couple of these on here so you can kind of see there's the beautiful like brown color on that side. And then this has like this beautiful purple on there. And then when you mix them together too, then you get just these beautiful, there's a dip in the paper there, but then you can get some really beautiful mixtures of color. And that's the fun part. You never really know what you're gonna get when you use one side, it's like one color. And then on this side, this one has a light, light, light green, which is probably Terra Vert in there. And um, a little, it's like a definitely more, you can kind of see it in there, but it's like this really pretty muted um, sage color. Let's see what else is here. This is another, a oh, similar, I think that's similar to that color. And then on the back side of this one, there's like a more of a teal. So you get more of a, a um, darker little blue there and then more of a greenish. This one has a little bit more like of a yellow tint to it. So I always recommend like with any art supply that you do this kind of swatching to see. And then this one here, it's really pretty. It's this like rust, orangey rust. And then there's that, a little variation of the that purple. It's got a lot of red in it. So it's kind of a more of like a, a purpley red. But let's see what these look like too on here. So you can just see, is this the one I just used? That was this one. But you'll see, you'll notice like this paper is just got this like velvet. So see the difference because of the way the paper is, it's the smooth, like really smooth, vibrant application versus here, because this is such a textured paper. It still is beautiful, but it just gives you a whole different look because of the paper that, because the paper's textured. And again, this is pastel matte, M-A-T. And let's see what else is there in this collection. There's a couple of different greens. And this one has green, blue, and purple in it. A little bit of a lighter, a tiny bit lighter of that one. And then let's see if we can get here some of the blue over here. But you're getting a little bit of the green mixed in there with that one because this one is like half half blue half blue half green there and let's see oh here's one so this i kept this one because it didn't 
passed, this didn't pass the manufacturing test, <laughs> but I actually love it um, because there, the wax didn't get filled into all of those, but it actually looks really cool to me. So there's some that are like that, kind of like the seconds that didn't pass the, the test to be sold, but you can still, they're still reusable. <laughs> and then look at this green. It's like a, a black, it's not black in the camera might look black, but it's this beautiful, dark, dark green that has a little bit of black in it. It's so pretty. And then there's some lighter, I think this might be similar to that one up there. There was some lighter, like blue colors. Let's see. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna see this one much because it's like more of a blender, but it does blend out really, really pretty. While I am doing this, let me, where's that one that was all funny? Let's do this one on here so you can see some of the pink on here pretty and then the pink and the blue Ooh, that blue is really pretty too most of the pigments I used for this collection were the ones that I sourced from France and um, I think almost all of them actually are in this particular collection uh, let me answer some questions while I'm doing this if you have to leave feel free to come back and watch the replay at any time let's see Sandy asked, hi, Tracy. Hi, Sandy. Um, she asked, are you still designing stamps? Oh, that's so funny that you asked that. I, um, got some, I got an email too, just recently from a, a customer that asked about my, um, graffiti glam stamps that I had designed for Stampington back in the day. And I just found some too, cause I was looking through some of my, my, um, drawers over here and I went to their, their website to see if they still had them, but I didn't find them, but I manufactured a bunch of my stamp, my own stamps over the last few years too. And I'm thinking about doing a couple more collections, um, of stamps, um, another swatch set. So I have a really cool swatch set of stamps that you can stamp on paper and then use for swatching, which I probably should have showed those, but they're not in the shop right now. I need to reorder those, but I want to make another set of those and then maybe some other florals. So I haven't designed new stamps in a couple of years, but it doesn't mean that I won't. Um, and, uh, I have designed some other stencils to actually have a bunch of stencil designs. I just haven't had them manufactured yet. Um, so there probably might be some coming up in the future. So thanks for asking that. Okay, let's see. There's Shar. Hey, Shar. She said, what's the best way to store your pigment bars? So this is a great question. So I am going to show you what I do. And let me bring you back down to my desktop. So you can see. So I actually st store them open in, I re I use the boxes that I, these are the boxes that I ship the pigment bars in. So originally I was shipping um, them in a larger size box. So you can see, and I also, when I first started making them, I started testing larger bars, but I actually settled on this size. So I have a few with this size, but they, they're just, they were just too big. I liked, I liked the smaller size. And so I put them in these little craft boxes like that. And I started doing them by color so that I could easily find them. Although these aren't by color because this is the, this was the, um, what do you call it? Collection. This was the, I think part of the wander collection and actually are these by color? Well, not really. <laughs> Some of them were by color. Um, but this one is the bottom. So it has like the little cotton cushion in there. I just left it in there. Uh, so this is one way you can store them. I also found these trays at Daiso. These are, they're, they're like metal, I don't know, aluminum or whatnot, but they're great. I, I use them. I was using them before for when I make my paints just to store them, you know, as I was, um, to, as they're drying. Um, so that's another 
to, uh, way that I store them. And then third is like, I just will, if I need a few for a project, I like to recycle all of my takeout containers. So I have a bunch of these plastic things that sometimes I'll just throw like a few bars in. And um, they are definitely, you don't want to put them out in the sun. They won't melt per se, but they will get softer, which is not a bad thing. Like you can use them when they are soft. They'll just be a little bit more creamy. But if you leave them in an area like on my studio table out there, there is an area that just gets hit by the sun come, you know, like three, four o'clock in the afternoon. And I noticed one day I was out there and I was using, um, I had the table full of all the stuff that we were packaging for the collection. And then the pigment bars and the wax pastels were in <laughs> this like direct sun. I was like, oh, I better move those. So definitely don't keep them in direct sun or, you know, like leave them in your car, especially if you live somewhere where it's like over a hundred degrees, they, they will probably melt at that rate. Um, if they're in a, in a place like a long time, but you know, it's not bad if they melt, you can, they'll, they'll harden up again, um, when you get them in a cooler temperature. So what I do with these is I just stack them on top of each other. I mean, obviously I have a bunch of them because I make them. So I don't know if everybody, some of you who bought all of the collections, you might have enough to fill like these trays, <laughs> these trays like that. But I find like having it like this, you know, something where I can see all the colors is nice. And um, then I can put it in a drawer or in a bigger box and then something like this too, because then I can just kind of grab, this is all, these are all from the Nature's Graffiti collection. Let me pan down again. Um, so, you know, it gives you a place to stack and like I could even fit my little ink bottles in here. So I knew that I wanted to use some of these for the, um, for this, for today's live stream. So I just threw a bunch in here and then I'm just going to do a couple of these on here. Wait, I already did on there. So here's one of the pinks, which is so pretty. It's, you know, super vibrant. It's like a, um, it's a little bit brighter than cotton candy, actually. And then there is there, there's a couple of colors that I really love that I created in this one. Actually, all of them, but... <laughs> um, and you'll see they are harder. They look like they're similar to the pigment bars, but they're actually harder. Um, they're, they, have, uh, they have beeswax, um, a, a little bit more beeswax, so that makes them a little bit harder. This is a pretty one too. So some of these you'll see, see how it has a little bit dark. I tried to do a little mixture of some of them too, which was kind of fun. So it's like a gray green color in this one. There's this beautiful, this one is my favorite probably from this collection. It's got like, it's a green olive. It's like kind of olive green, but then there's also yellow iron oxide in there. So when you look at it, you can actually see the yellow that's in there and it is so pretty. It's super, uh, like it will, you can see it on the blue, but on top of paint, I'll, I'll do a swatch of paint and, and paint over with this one. This particular one just like pops off of the color. I mean, off of the, the paint, the painted background. So, you know, definitely different when it comes to the papers that you use. Um, you know, this one, you can definitely get some really beautiful thin line work and a little bit thicker if you use the side. And then if you just use the tip of this a little bit, you know, you can really like create some fun abstract kind of fl floral and botanical shapes using, using these. And um, there's a blue in here that's really pretty too. This blue I love. And the other thing that you'll want to take notice of, you can mix these too. So I could put a little bit of this down. So there is a key to this though, because it actually is better if you use 
the, let's do a different color over here. So if you use this wax pastel and then use the bar on top, you get better mixture. Because of the way that these are created, these um, don't always, this is pretty, look at that. It's got like four different little colors in that one. Um, these always, these don't do very well on top. They're great on the bottom, but because of the, the binder in that one, um, it just kind of will give you a, a little resist instead of mixing. So use the wax pastels at the bottom first if you want to mix, and you can mix the colors of the wax pastels too. But again, you know, play with these so that you get an idea of how they all work together. So again, look at this. I, I just love this Claire Fontaine paper. And then I kind of left the mixed media paper by itself. <laughs> this one has this beautiful like pinkish brown and then it's got like a purpley pink on the back side of it. So they're all like, you just get these really cool mixes of colors when you use them. And then they work great as a resist. So let me grab white paper so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll do, maybe we'll do some on my mixed media paper. I just grab a piece that is empty. Do I have a ruler in here? Here it is. I'm just gonna take a little and tear it. So I don't, I don't need a whole page paper right now. I don't have enough space. So I just use a straight edge and then I tear off a little piece of it like that with the ruler. And I'm gonna paint with a little watercolor so you can see some of the watercolors. And let's do, let's do a little, we'll do a little resist here. So I don't know if you can see this in there, but there is like, you can see the green and the yellow that's in there. And let's just do a couple of swatches of the paints. So let's see, let me ask, add some questions too. Uh, Dana, Dana asks, I was going to say, how do you keep your nails gorgeous with all those pigments? Yes, that's why I wear gloves. Um, but that my nails do need to be cut. I was, I was, uh, thinking about that earlier. I was like, I need to really cut and file my nails. They're a little too long right now. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Uh, Jeanette says, is it too late to buy the Nature's Graffiti collection? Uh, no, Jan Jeanette, it, there, there are some boxes left. If you go underneath the video, there's a shop Nature's Graffiti collection. You can click on that, that um, button and it'll take you right to the page where you can pre-order pigment bars. And there are a couple of boxes left. Um, I'm probably going to upload a few watercolors and inks tomorrow. I'm going to show some of those right now. So you get to see some of these colors. And this is actually part of the Nature's Graffiti um, collection right there too. So I'm going to use some of those. Let's see. Can you see all this okay? Yeah. I just want to make sure the lighting is okay. The lighting is starting to shift over here. So let me grab a... We'll swatch with this dagger striper. This is silver silk. Where is my, I keep misplacing, oh, here it is. I was like, I keep misplacing. This one's my favorite. This is the golden natural silver brush um, dagger striper. This is the silver silk dagger also. You know, that's like, these are like my favorite. These are my favorite brushes, any kind of dagger. 
let's do a little bit of blue. I probably should have used a thinner, I mean, a smaller brush. There's not a lot of space on this paper. <laughs> and I just realized my water over there is really dirty. So I'm just mixing some of these little swatches on here. You hear the little tippy toes. Here comes Indy. I wonder if I should switch to a smaller brush. We'll do this and see how far we get with these colors. So while I am swatching, I also want to make sure I have another piece of paper to clean up my brushes. And I was doing some work with the pigment bars in another class. So this is some of the, some of that. Here we go, but a blank page over here. So I'm just gonna clean off my brush before I put it in the water and then I can switch to another color. And then I'm also gonna mix in some of these inks so you can see this is a really pretty like greenish gray color here in that in that tile. And my brush has a lot of water in it, so it's not getting as opaque, but opaque, but look at that. I did that so you could see that that green kind of move into the gray color. It's so pretty. There's a little yellow iron oxide in there, and you can see how it starts to kind of move into that watercolor. And then I can take this also and just do, I just dip my water, my brush in water. So I get a little bit more of a, a wash of color there. And then I can drop in, let's drop in one of these little inks and see. So with my inks, you want to shake them just a little bit. And then, oh, that's dirty. Let's see if I have any clean pipettes here. <laughs> I should. This one's somewhat clean. And then you can drop them right in like that. You can also drop them onto the palette to mix with the watercolors and create like totally brand new colors, which is nice. I love using the pipettes to, looks like a jellyfish, um, to move the paints also. And then I'll show you what this ends up looking like when I mix it. But with the inks, I love using them on like a bigger piece of paper because you can really do some beautiful like dropping and dripping kind of things. I, I'm kind of limited on space since I, on here. I guess I can move that out of the way, but. The beauty of the inks and playing with inks is that when you use them like wet on wet, or you, you know, drop other colors in. So I can take a little bit of maybe this green over here and just drop a little bit in. And you start to see like how this mixes in there. So you can do a lot of really fun abstract painting with my watercolors, but look how vibrant that green is. It's so pretty. And then I can use this, well, it's probably better if I wait till it's dry, but let's do a little, let's do a little resist over here. So that wax will act as a little bit of a resist there. I can also take a paper towel and just kind of collect over the where it beads up a little bit. So you can see that. I really love the ones that are a little bit more. Let's see, where's the one that has, where did I put it? So there's one that has more of a blender bar on one side. I guess I could use this one so you can see 
I need to get another piece of paper. I'll do this on a different sheet of paper. But let's see if I can do a little bit of the pink on this one. Hopefully my brush isn't too... My water in there is like super dirty. So I'm just coloring. I wanted to use a color that was a little bit more contrasted. And so now you can see everywhere the wax pastel is, then I'm getting that nice little resist of color. So I can kind of make this look like a floral shape. But when you use the white, let's see, there's also a purple. I'm gonna use a little bit of the pink that's on here. And there's a little bit of a purple color here. Let's see, oh, this one too. This one's a little bit more maroon. I think it has more of that, yeah. It's a really pretty, like, deep maroon color. So I'm just letting the, the watercolor barely touch the other wet parts so that you start to see it blend. Let's see, it's a little blurry. There we It's a little bit blurry. It's not, I think my camera's trying to figure out what to focus on. <laughs> I have too many things in my hand. There. So I'm not really, I didn't really make anything here. I just wanted to show you like how the, what happens when you're swatching the colors, but I really love to see like what happens with when colors touch each other, like you get these beautiful blooms of colors. Um, now, if I want to, let's see if this is dry. This is dry. You can use the wax pastels over the top of these. This color in particular, I really love over the top of other colors. There's that on top of there. Focusing very well. This one is interesting because it looks like it would be this light kind of purple, but it's actually got a little bit of a darker uh, um, not darker, but it's like a little bit more of like a pink. It looks a little different in the camera. There's one that this one. Let's see if this is it. Let's go back here. It's kind of a mauve. This one's kind of mauve color. And then you have a little of the similar to that. This one has a little bit more red in it though. You can kind of see it a little bit more. So definitely, depending on the, the type of paper you use, you're gonna get a whole different look to the mark. So obviously look at how textured that is. It's still beautiful, but it has lots of texture because of the paper. And then again, here's that pastel matte. I mean, it's super smooth velvety texture almost like. Like you don't see the difference. You can totally tell the difference of the, of the substrate there. And then same with like, this is the mixed media paper. And this is not even watercolor paper. So some watercolor papers are gonna give this a whole nother different dimension and look and feel and texture, depending on the, the, the actual surface of the watercolor paper, if it's cold press or hot press. And let me see. Thank you, Tracy K. She says, I love that chartreuse. I know, me too. Um, <laughs> Dana says, no, don't cut them. She's referring to my nails. <laughs> Uh, you're so funny that's awesome um let me show you this blender bar because it really is like one of my favorite things even though it looks like it's nothing but 
you know, it, it really, oh wait, this is, this was my tester. That's not the right one. That is, let me find one. Oh, here. Um, that was a different recipe. So you can't really see what I'm painting right now there. I'll do another one here too. It's kind of fun because it's like, oops, see, can you see that in there? You never really know what, what you're going to get uh, until you put the paint over it. So let's do a little bit of maybe a little mix of this and a little mix of that over here. And what did I paint over here? Oh, yeah. So you'll start to see, you see where that white, that's where I use the wax bar. So you start to see how it like becomes that resist. And then I still, I get to see a little bit of the white paper that's underneath there. That's one of my favorite things about using the resist. Let's grab a little blue over here. Oh, you can't even see this side. Sorry. Still can't see it. Hold on. I didn't realize this was off the camera. And then where did I paint those? <laughs> we'll see if I can find them again. So I got a lot of water on there. So you can kind of see, there we go. So that acts as that resist. Let's see if I get a better, if I add a little bit more color here, a little bit get to steal you get to see some of where that white is so that's what that blender bar is great for it acts as the if especially if you want the white resist um you can also use it as a blender so like if i have a couple of different colors here let's take something darker then i can take that blender and use it to kind of smooth this all and then you can get that like really pretty transition and then you can also blend this one definitely is not blending as much because this is a, a wax pastel so it's a little bit different but you can still blend it a little bit I can put this other color on top of there so really just have fun layering and playing with these there are a couple of ways that you can set them. You can use a something like this, um, the Spectrafix. But I just kind of let them, over time they'll dry. Um, but if you want to do something a little bit more permanent, definitely matte medium. You could put that um, on, over the top of it too. There's no oil in these bars. Um, so you shouldn't have a problem with it like cracking or anything like that. I've, I've set it with matte medium uh, many times, but in the, in the full swatch studio, um, or not swatch studio, um, in the workshop that I do, hold on, let me move this back. Hang tight really quick. So in the workshop, hair looks kind of crazy, <laughs> uh, that you get as a bonus when you purchase the paint collections, we do a little bit more in-depth swatching. Um, I show a little bit more layering and then usually some other fun mixed media technique or like we've done stuff with oil. And so every uh, workshop is different. So you get access to that when you purchase um, any of the collection. And um, you also get a couple of bonus access. If you purchase a box, you get to uh, you get access to the whole library of Tracy Bautista Color for a month. So that is something that you'll get an email after you receive your box. You'll get an email with a link to to be able to watch. Um, there's a bunch of videos in there and uh, lots of fun content. So I hope you enjoyed a peek into the making of the collection, just so you see like how much work 
goes into making these products. It's such a, a beautiful process and it is definitely, you know, takes months to do because of all the different pieces of them. So I hope that you really enjoyed that and got a little insight of how I make paint and all of the different pieces that go into making a collection. You know, I don't just, you know, take one pigment and start mixing it and call it a paint collection. There is this whole process of from the ideation to the brainstorming to pulling a color palette from photos that I've taken or artwork that I've created and then the collection, like actually creating the collection starts. And then there's the whole writing about the collection and the feeling and the stories behind it. So it is just this really um, beautiful process, I think, that is hopefully you get to experience when you're using the paints and um, and the pigment bars and the wax pastels. It has been so much fun to develop all of these different mixed media supplies and and um, they definitely are different from anything that is out in the market for sure. I have not seen anything like quite like the pigment bars and um, they're just really fun to use and many of you who have them. Thank you for sharing what you've been creating and I hope you're having so much fun using them. Um, I was going to show a little sneak peek, but I didn't realize it would go this long. Um, but my next collection is a little ode to um, my love for the whole Bohemian spirit. So that is coming up. I also have uh, a couple more things that are in the works. I usually do a holidays in July collection, so there will be probably a little pop-up mini box for that sometime in July. So many of you are on my mailing list. You'll get access to that first, and then I usually announce it on social media after. And so if you want to get a first access, um, definitely make sure you're on my email list. And I think that's everything I wanted to show today. I know that was a lot. So I am so appreciative that you are here and many of you stuck with me this whole time. Let me see if I made, made sure that I um, answered all the questions. I think there might be a couple more. And my camera, my camera is in the way. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, let's see. Noelle asked, do you ever recreate a collection? That's a great question, Noelle. No, I actually haven't. Well, there's a couple of question, uh, collections I have, uh, which are the ink collections. I had a prism color collection, which is basically the rainbow of colors. I recreated a, a, a variation of that a couple of times, the prism and the kaleidoscope ink set. Um, each were kind of like that idea of the rainbow, but they were actually different recipes. So I've done that. Um, but as far as like each collection that's released, um, I have not created a repeat. Although the holiday collection every year has the holiday theme, but it also has probably some similar colors, but there's always like a new twist to the holiday collection every year. So that one may be the closest to kind of recreating, but uh, like any of these special ones, Lonnie Kai, um, the Kaleidoscope, my Wild Blooms, they are all for that season. And so if you don't want to miss out, the best way to do that is to become a subscriber. And I have a quarterly subscription option for that. And then the other option is if you're on my email list and I have extra boxes, then I usually will post those. So for this collection, there are a few more left. I don't know if they got taken up while we were, well, while we were painting now. But, um, and then from time to time throughout the year, I release special limited edition boxes, either mystery boxes or gift boxes a holiday i always do a gift box and um and that's probably going to launch in october this year just because i think things for holidays keep coming closer and closer it's probably going to be early maybe early october this year just so that i can prep to make sure that everything um, we have enough supplies and i can get everything made before uh the early early december time frame um but there are a couple more 
uh, collections in the works. And the Swatch Studio, if you love color, the Swatch Studio is probably a really great place. There is, um, that's open. You can join as a monthly, if you want monthly inspiration for your inspiration sketchbook, you'll notice that. So for the Swatch Studio, the last couple of months, um, each one of those collections have also led into my paint collection. So you get, you kind of get a sneak peek of the theme in, in that particular uh, membership. Uh, that is a Swatch Studio Digital Inspiration Board is a monthly um, membership and you get access to the a digital inspiration board and also a beautiful PDF playbook that has a bunch of different um, prompts and uh, questions, story, story reflections, color palettes, all kinds of fun stuff in there. And then the quarterly uh, Swatch Studio is the uh, flare trays, which I didn't really share much about today, but that is a package you get in the mail that has a beautiful curated selection of uh, pieces that go with that theme for that for that month or for that quarter. And um, there are some hand, there are some, uh, what do you call that, fabrics that I've designed. So you'll get pieces of those in there. So it's, it's made, made to give you kind of this inspiration wrapped up in these kits. So I'll be sharing more as I, as I developed and put together the next Swatch Studio so you can get a little behind the scenes peek. But those are some of the things that I have available in the shop now. So um, let's see. There's a couple more questions and then we'll wrap. Let's see. Who's this? Oh, Noelle also asked, how many mixed media boxes are made with each collection? So it depends. It depends on my subscribers um, because I make them all for the, the subscription. And then it also depends on like the holiday collection. I probably make over 100 boxes. Uh, because they sell during the, it's like a one time of year where everybody, if they can't get them the rest of the year, the holiday collection is probably my most popular collection. So there have been times where I've made that many boxes, which is a lot, a lot of paint and a lot, a lot of shipping. So I have help during the holidays and seasonal help to ship and package. Um, and then or pigment bars, she says. They are always sold out when I look online. I know. Yes, yeah, so pigment bars, actually, I've been doing pre-orders. So right now, you can pre-order the Nature's Graffiti collection, and you can see the range of colors there. So every collection, I designed probably about um, 10 to 15 colors that are kind of poured in between, and like you'll get a variation inside of each bar. Um, each bar has anywhere from two up to sometimes you saw some of them have like four or five like little bits of colors in them. And so you get it's kind of a surprise box each box you buy if you order more than two. So sometimes I have customers who are order double two boxes. We try our best to give you um, one of each color so you don't get multiples. But sometimes it's hard because the bars are double sided. So you may get a repeat of a color. But the bars, um, I make a lot of them. <laughs> and they all, they've they been selling out like hotcakes because I think because they are just so different and they're beautiful, the color is beautiful, the way that you can use them with both acrylic and I didn't even show how you can use them with oil and with oil paints and oil pastels. They are beautiful using them with that if you're into oil painting. Um, you can actually turn the the pigment bar into oil paint and um, a wax paint. And then um, you can use them also with acrylics and watercolor. So you can use them as a resist like I showed today, or you can also use them on top of watercolor. Um, and you can kind of you play, depending on what your acrylic, um, if you're using really like heavy body acrylic and it's really plasticky, then it, I would... I, the, the pigment bars will kind of slide off the top, but if you're using more of a watered down acrylic, you can definitely draw and paint over the top of them with that. So, um, there's lots of, of variety and, uh, things that you can do with the pigment bar. So I think that's why they have tended to sell out so quickly. And, um, 
So I tried to do a set where you can pre-order. So if you order the pigment bars from this collection, they are going to ship um, probably around the middle of July. Um, that'll give me enough time to make uh, make them. And um, I already shipped hundreds of bars over the last couple of weeks. So uh, best bet is to make sure you're on my email list. And I think that's the last question. Let me see. Uh, let's see. Oh, Dana, I just saw your question about, do you have time to demonstrate one with sparkles? Um, I don't know if I have very many that have sparkles here. I don't think I do. I mean, I have a couple of the, the, um, pigment, I mean the wax pastels, but I don't know if you'll be able to actually see it on the top of this. Let me, I'm just painting on the side. Yeah, that one's too light. And I don't think very many of this collection had too many sparkles. It will come in and let's see if I have one from another collection over here. Where did I put those stacks? Oh, here they are. I was trying to find the stacks of things. Yeah, the last two collections, I, I put a little bit of sparkle on the top. So some of these, you're not going to really see. To, like, see, you see it in here. So you might see a little bit of that sparkle when you use it. But you, I don't think you're going to actually be able to see it in the camera. Let me try. Yeah, that one's not going to show up. And some of these are way in the center, so I can't really get them to come out. <laughs> and but anyways, like you like I said, you're not gonna be able to really see it too well in the camera just because of the um it's even hard to see sparkle on the I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can't really see it. Even with the sparkle, the mica and the watercolor, sometimes you can't really see it on camera too well. But it's there for the for the pigment bars. They're really the the sparkle is subtle. You can actually see the sparkle um, with some of the pigment bars because when you heat them, let me show you this one. It's really kind of I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It might look brown. So this area here where it kind of looks brownish, that's actually a gold sparkle. And yeah, see, so you can't see it on the on the camera, which is a bummer, but I can see the mica as I turn this. So this is all melted pigment bar and just layers and layers of it. And I love what happens like when you layer, like see this yellow ochre one underneath and then there's this beautiful blue. So you get this like mixture of green right over the top when they're layered on top of each other. So those were all like heated. So if you'd missed my video, definitely go back to watch that on my YouTube channel. It's up there now. I just posted it yesterday, I think. Um, you can see it on there. And it's also uh, in the, if you, if you click on the Nature's Graffiti Collection, Shop Nature's Graffiti Collection, you can actually see it on that link too. So thank you for those of you who are still here and who hung out with me this whole time. I can tell my voice is starting to um, get tired. Oh, good. Dana says, I see the sparkles. Awesome. <laughs> um, and Dana says, this was so much fun, Tracy. I love the lives. Oh, thank you. It's like being there. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to try. I really, I'm thinking during the summer, um, I may try to do a couple more, just shorter ones so they're not so long. And maybe try, I just am so long-winded when I, when I am online. I could probably talk for another hour, but then I'll probably lose my voice. Um, but there is so much that I always want to talk about. So I'm going to try to give myself like a 20, a 20 minute like max and see if I can do it. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. And, and really, if you have a chance to swatch out the colors and um, not only if it, my paint lines, but with other paint lines that you have, it's such a great way to 
understand what happens when you layer things. It's a really great way to teach yourself how to work with mixed media. It's always a question that I get, like, how do you know what to layer where? And a lot of that is creating these little swatch cards and then taking notes. I'm really a big proponent on like studio notes. And if you have the time to just like jot down five minutes after you've done your work for, you know, in the studio and played for, you know, an hour, or maybe you played for 15 minutes, but spend time writing about the process and writing what you did, maybe writing about the things you loved, what the things that you found challenging, maybe something that you want to try for the next time, because then when you go back again to play and to experiment, you remember what you've done. Um, and I, I really encourage you. It's something that I teach in, in my inspiration sketchbook course, um, is, you know, really how to document your process. I think it's such an important part of growing as an artist. So um, there are lots of different ways you can do it, but just by taking a few notes every time you are in the studio, it will really help you um, grow and find out things you like and, you know, come up with new ideas and new themes and new things that you want to play with. So I will close on that note and thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I'm looking at the last question. I missed some of your, um, some of your comments. Yes, it's in Fitzroy. Yes. Sandy says, I've never heard of St. Luke's. Yes, you have to go since you're there. I love Fitzroy. I stayed, my sister and I rented an Airbnb there and we stayed in Fitzroy and we went to the, I went to the gardens. We went to um, the Rialto Towers. I love the Louis Bar on the very top of the Rialto Towers. But St. Luke's is awesome. They have a pigment wall of just like jars of pigments. And I have it in my stories. If you go into my story highlights on my Instagram, you can see some of my Australia trip. You have to kind of scroll because it was a few years ago, but... Um, David Coles, I think that's his last name, is the head paint maker for Langri Language Artist Colors, and they are made there in Melbourne, and he and his wife uh, run the shop, and I spent some time just hanging out in there and talking with them. It was so much fun, so if you're ever, anybody out there, if you're ever out in that area, it's a definitely a, a must um, visit for sure. I purchased a few pigments that I took home with me, a really beautiful Australian ochre that's that was mined from there, and a titanium white that they make exclusively there, and one of their black um, pigments I got there. But I've got a few that, then they do sell online, so you can have them ship, but I think shipping is a little bit expensive. So I think I ended up actually shipping some of mine home because I bought so many pigments when I was out there. <laughs> But um, it's a, such a fun place. I had so much fun and really good food when I was out there. So, okay, everybody. I am so grateful that you are part of my creative community. And um, you will find everything that I'm offering there on my website. So if you click the button underneath my video, if you're on listening, watching this on Crowdcast, if you are watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description where you can get to Trace. It's TracyBautistaColor.com. And I have a fun summer series inspiration sketchbook. We're doing a 90 days to creative collection. Um, so if you want to join me for the summer, that would be a fun project to if you have a project you're working on and you want to concentrate on. It is something that we are going to start next week. So if you want to join me, um, come and play in the summer series. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. I will see you all in our ne my next live session. And thank you again from the bottom of my heart for supporting my creative journey. I send you so much love and lots of hugs. Okay, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye.